Hey everyone. Today I wanted to share with you five of my favorite exercises that I've learned over the years from various lessons and masterclasses with some of my favorite artists uh, that have really had a significant impact on my playing. Um, these are things that I've worked on for, for years and that I'm always sharing with people and I thought I'd share that with you today. Before we jump into lesson number one, I just wanted to mention that this video is sponsored by Tonebase, which has an awesome library of guitar courses and lessons from likely some of your favorite artists around the world, but we'll get to more on that later. All right, let's get to the first exercise. The first one is by the great Czech guitarist Pavel Steidl, which if you haven't seen him before, he is one of my favorite performers and he has so much control in his playing, both in the left and right hand and musicality wise, um, that really you, it's the type of musician you want to absorb everything from. So I want to share you this exercise that I saw him teach uh, in a masterclass to various students uh, that really blew everyone's mind because it's something that looks very easy, but it's actually very, very difficult, I think you'll find out. So let me show you this. It's a left hand independence exercise where you're really having to control just one finger squeezing at a time while the other sit there idly. Now this is a really important skill because all the time I'm finding with my students and, and of course in my own playing as well too, that I'm squeezing uh, just entirely too much at the wrong times. Maybe the note isn't even ringing at the time and you're still squeezing the note down. So this really works on just one finger moving and squeezing at a time. And I think you'll really enjoy it. Let's go ahead and set up our left hand in fourth position. And we're gonna set our index finger down on the fourth fret of the fourth string. And then our second finger on the fifth fret of the third string. Our third finger on the sixth fret of the second string. And then our pinky on the seventh fret of the first string. If you were to play all of those notes together and squeeze everything, it would sound like this. Okay, so that's how you can check if you're in the right position. Now, we're not actually going to squeeze any of these fingers. We're just, for now, going to touch the strings to where if you pluck in the right hand, they would be muted. Now, in the right hand, it's very simple because it never changes. We're just going to pluck all four of those strings, the fourth, third, second, and first, over and over again as a block chord, like this. Okay, everything equal. Now, we're gonna keep this going in the right hand and make sure you don't have any notes coming through there. And then what we're gonna do is with our index finger, we're going to fret that note. So we're gonna squeeze just the index finger. The other fingers are still just barely touching the strings so that they're muted, but our index finger goes down and then it lifts off to where it plays an open string. So it plays F sharp D, and I'm just putting in two dead plucks here between each of those notes. So it's F sharp, D, pluck, pluck, and then the next finger. Okay, so the next finger, we go to our second finger here, right? And that's going two, zero. And then so on with our third finger. And then our pinky last. Then I head back down. Now you might notice this is easiest on the external fingers here, on your index and on your pinky. But those inner fingers, you might notice accidentally pressing down two at the same time. Uh, so this is something you wanna work on really slowly, um, but I guarantee you it'll make a lasting impact on your left hand and it works really well as a warm up uh, because it's not too strenuous on your left hand. Now I believe that Pavel just shared with us that exercise that I just showed you, but uh, I try to take it a step further over time and take away repetitions on each of the strings. So I might do this. And then I take it a step further and I try doing one and three together while two and four are muted like this. And then I do two and four press down while one and three are muted like this. 
So each time they're lifting off the strings and playing the open strings afterwards. All right, exercise number two. This one was taught to me by one of my favorite guitarists in the world, and that is Agnello Desiderio, the uh, amazing Italian guitarist. Uh, although I have to say that I've seen variations of this exercise uh, taught by many different artists now, uh, but he was the one that really blew me away with his control um, on stage. He's always so controlled with his tone and with his dynamics that uh, when he demonstrated this exercise, uh, I, I really saw where a lot of that control came from, and that's, that's careful work, right? All right, let's break down this exercise. So it's just going to be an E minor chord in left hand, and in, in the right hand, it's just the pattern from Etude 1 by Via Lobos, but I'll break it down for you here anyways. But essentially what we're trying to do is develop right hand control and make sure that we can really bring out whatever finger we want to bring out. So I'm starting with the index because the thumb is really easy. I like to do that one last, um, but I'm going to start with the index. And the point here is that only the index finger is accented. All the other fingers are the same volume. Um, and at first you have to take this really slow. So let me break this down and we're gonna practice it really slow here together. So here we go. I'm just going to accent the index finger. Now, make sure you don't start with a big loud thumb stroke because again, even the thumb has to be quiet. It's gonna start like this. It's very difficult in the beginning, but I think you'll get it and make sure you start really slow. There really is no lower limit to how slow you can start with this exercise. So next, we're gonna do this with our middle finger. The really tricky part about this one with accenting the middle finger is that your A finger really wants to pluck that first string loud, but you have to control it. Now, let's just accent the A finger. Okay, and the very last one would be accenting the thumb. I do this one last because it's easiest. Uh, but don't forget, only thumb is loud. For me, the hardest part of this exercise isn't actually just bringing out the right finger, it's about making all the other ones quiet. So make sure when you practice this one, that you focus on that particular aspect. Okay, this next exercise was really drilled into my head by my previous professor and amazing Cuban guitarist, Rene Izquierdo. Among the many amazing exercises uh, he's shared with me over the years, this one has been one of the most impactful for my own playing because we have to play octaves all over the place in the standard guitar repertoire. And this is just a really good way to train your left hand fingers to be thinking independently and to be moving to the next position as soon as possible. So let me break this down for you here. And by the way, if you haven't played chromatic octaves before in the past, it's best to just start with this with a few notes. That way you don't get overwhelmed, but you could just start with E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A for instance. That's what I'll notate here on the screen for you. But what you're gonna do here is, while you're playing one of the octaves, you wanna prepare the next set of fingers. So here it'd be one and three over the two Fs, the F on the sixth string and the F on the fourth string. So you can see, if I'm here and then I have to jump to here, 
then that's gonna slow me down and cause weird accents in the music. So what I wanna do is prepare my first and third finger over those frets. And then while I'm playing one and three, I'm preparing two and four over this F sharp, right? Those two F sharps. And while I play those, I'm preparing my third finger here over G. And I'm gonna use the open string here for open G and the closed G here at the bottom. And then this is one of the trickier parts is going to the G sharp where your index finger where before it was dealing all on the sixth string area. Now it has to move all the way up to the third string first fret, right? So that's your first big transition. So it has to curl in and then your pinky here has to reach out for the G sharp on the fourth fret of the sixth string. And then lastly, we have A. So open A and closed A. So your second finger has to curl up to reach that second fret of the third string. And then of course you continue this upwards once you have the notes down, but you play B flat, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, and G sharp. And he had us actually slide this all the way up to the 12th fret to practice shifting and coordination there as well. So anyways, that's one of my favorite exercises for left hand independence. I hope you get something out of it like I have. Uh, it's really helped me in my development in my left hand. I just want to take a quick second here to thank the sponsor of this video, Tonebase, which is very easy for me to recommend because this is a resource that I wish I had as a guitarist when I was starting out. Tonebase has this huge library of lessons and courses. They also do live initiatives where they do two week long intensives with artists as well as mentorships and even a community forum where you can chat with other people who are interested in learning classical guitar. Um, they have lessons from lots of my favorite guitarists and uh, even some of the guitarists that I've mentioned already in this video like Rene Izquierdo and Aniello de Saderio, um, not only covering exercises like I talked about today, but also covering full length pieces, breaking it down section by section. And I know when I was learning a piece in my undergraduate and my masters, I would consume everything there is out there. I would listen to all of the recordings. I would watch any lessons that I could find on YouTube or, or clips of master classes. Um, so if this was available when I first started guitar playing, I would have watched everything on that website, I, I promise you. So. Anyways, I hope you will check it out. And they're also providing a 30% discount uh, for your subscription on the website. And that also helps me as well. So I hope you'll consider it. Give it a try, if nothing else. Um, so thank you again, Tonebase, for sponsoring this video. All right, this next exercise may sound really simple because we do it by accident all the time. Uh, but it's actually very difficult to do consistently. This exercise has been taught by just about everyone, so I don't even know who to attribute it to. I'll just share it with you here. All right, if you thought that sounded terrible, you would be correct because I am buzzing every single note. Let me tell you a little bit why this buzzing exercise is an exercise that's really important to me to practice, not only with this C major scale that I just played it with, uh, but also in my repertoire um, to essentially avoid excess squeezing in the left hand, which is the cause of so much fatigue so many hand injuries, and just so much difficulty in our playing. So what I'm doing is first, I'm acknowledging that there's a difference between not pressing at all, which gives you this muted sound that we did in the first exercise, and between pressing all the way down where there is no buzz at all. There's an in-between there where you get this buzz. And it's really hard to consistently get that buzz. And a good way to practice this is just by doing what I did there, four plucks uh, per note, so that you can really dial in where that buzz happens. Maybe you'll miss it every now and then and you'll play a solid note. And then you slowly lift up until it buzzes. 
Now, where you really want to watch out for over squeezing are areas where you shift. For instance, here on the third string. On shifts, we often over squeeze. We might do this. Right? And really lay into that note. So watch out for those areas where you shift. Uh, that's as when you come back down to here. Making sure that third finger buzzes as well. Um, if you practice this not only with scales but in your repertoire, you will find that the actual amount that you need to squeeze is so little and that you'll start to internalize that feeling of squeezing less, which is really the goal. Um, squeeze as minimal as possible so that you don't exhaust yourself. Okay, last but not least, I want to share with you one of my favorite exercises that the great Bruce Holzman showed me. He showed me this really awesome exercise that I believe he called area codes. At least here in the United States, area codes uh, are three digits. They are like 813 or 212, 323. And that's how this exercise goes, right? So it goes, Two, one, two, three, two, three, four, three, four. Now, what this exercise is really great for is building coordination because it's actually fairly easy to build coordination going one, two, three, four. But of course, we don't always get that lucky in our music. A lot of times we have to do complex motions and our hands aren't always aligned nicely for those. So this is a good way to practice that. You can pluck just alternating in the right hand, but the left hand going two, one, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, and then you shift up a fret. Two, one, two, three, two, three, four, three, four. Anyways, I think you already get the idea of this exercise, so I wanted to go in a little bit more detail of how to get the most out of it. So first off, when you're playing this, you don't want your left hand to be hanging off the fingerboard like this and then throwing your left hand up onto it later. You want to have all of your fingers nicely aligned so that they're hovering around the area that they're about to play, right? So this, as opposed to this. You can see how that second version is not nearly as efficient. The other thing you want to do is transfer weight from finger to finger. You don't want to keep all the weight down on one finger while you're playing the next. For instance, if I go two, one, and then set my second finger down while I'm still squeezing my first, that's no good. I want to transfer the weight from finger to finger each time. So when I now go to three, I release two. I don't lift it way up high, I just release the pressure. And then four, three, four, same thing. Notice my first and second finger here are near the fret still, but they're not squeezing. I also just want to mention that, especially with this exercise, you'll want to practice it with a metronome so that you know that you're lining up everything correctly and that the coordination is perfect. And if you're not coordinating perfectly and you know getting buzzes and, and plucking a little early or a little late, then it's essentially a useless exercise. So make sure you're doing it with a metronome and you can keep track of the tempos that you're able to achieve this at so that you know you're making progress. Okay, great. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Um, again, go ahead and check out the description of this video for the link to Tonebase as well as uh, my discount code that you can use to get 30% off your subscription at Tonebase. Um, I hope you'll check it out and I hope you'll subscribe to my channel uh, for more videos like this. Make sure to keep up with me on all the different social media platforms that I have linked below on Instagram, Facebook, um, and everywhere else. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.